Hello, everyone. We're Marin and Angela, and this is Homeschool Unrefined. Welcome to our spring and summer 2022 season. This whole season is going to be a treat for you. As some of you know, we've been creating this podcast since 2016. At that time, some of our kids were in single digits, playdates dominated, and we had this idea to create a community around keeping homeschool simple, real, and fun. For this season, we've gone back through all five years of episodes to find those that have been the most loved and downloaded. We've compiled them into a list of our top 20 favorites, and we'll be counting them down for you this season. You are definitely going to want to stick around to hear which episodes made it to the top. We're really proud of these episodes and wanted to share them because they're at the heart of what Homeschool Unrefined is all about. We wanted to go back and remind ourselves of the work we've done and the community that's been built around these ideas. You might feel some nostalgia when you hear the old music and our old intro. There will also probably be some old promotions and some links that no longer are no longer relevant. We've come a long way as podcasters, yet the messages in these episodes are timeless. If you're looking for new episodes of Homeschool Unrefined, join our Patreon community. For just $5 a month, you'll always have a new episode in your podcast feed. We are continuously recording new content and love sharing our lives with you there. Consider joining for $5 a month. You will be not only nodding your head along with us every week, but you'll also find a group of amazing people. Plus, you'll be supporting our message. You can join us at patreon.com slash homeschool unrefined. Okay, here are our most loved episodes. You're listening to Homeschool Unrefined. I'm Marin. And I'm Angela. Let's encourage each other, laugh, and get real about homeschool. Welcome to the podcast where we keep homeschool simple, real, and fun. You've got episode 23, What We Don't Do. Hi, Marin. Hi, Angela. How are you? Good. Are you ready for summer? I'm getting there. (laughs) <laughs> Have you pulled out your clothes yet <laughs> for summer? Um, kind of. You know, my kids started wearing shorts like a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, I pulled out my first pair yesterday. Have mm-hmm. you pulled out shorts yet? I had to because we went we went to a warm location a couple weeks oh, ago. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I had to. I've been thinking about it for months. <laughs> Did you buy new clothes? It's Have you fun. buy new clothes every summer, or what do you do? Well, I try not to. Yeah, right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I try not to, but you know, like you never know what's gonna fit. And I know if something doesn't fit, like how can you? I've tried to survive summers where I'm like, I have two shorts that fit me, <laughs> or whatever, and I'm just gonna make do. But yeah, so sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Yeah, it's always a little. You? It's always a little anxiety producing. It is dragging every out the shorts year. or the every capris because you're like, what if these do not fit like at all? <laughs> should we just not? Even should I just? Them? I don't know if I want to try these on because what if they don't fit? And then if they do fit, I'm like, oh, phew. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't try mine, you could just be like, they probably fit. I'm just, just don't I haven't tried them on. I don't like them. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I did. I got I did get a few pairs of shorts before our trip and some tank tops and yeah, very casual this summer. Some, you know, some summers I'm like, I'm just going to wear summer dresses all summer. And then (laughs) this summer I'm like, no. Yeah. We did that like shorts and tank tops. (laughs) We did that the same summer one summer. We bought bought dresses. I remember that. That was like three summers. We ago. do everything together. We do not. I we do not try this. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> oh my gosh! But no. we do talk to each other a lot. Yeah. So I think one of us is like, I think I'm gonna buy dresses, and then the other yeah. one was like, Yeah, me too. Me too. Where are you getting them? <laughs> me too. Okay. <laughs> and now I look at all those dresses, and I'm like, No, I'm not gonna wear them. No. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with the shorts. I pretty much have a uniform: shorts mm-hmm. and a t-shirt. Yeah. And a card hey, cardigan it works. if it's cold in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's what I wear in the winter too, except just with jeans. <laughs> or my pajama jeans. I need like a little bit of a, you know how I was talking about Mona, my loving this week's was the t-shirt, which I oh, love yeah. my favorite, my favorite t-shirt. I really do like it, but I would love a couple of varieties of t-shirts, <laughs> like, like different a different colors. style might be. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Besides the right colors, like even just like a little, a little maybe longer. a little flow, a little flowier yeah. <laughs> oh, for, a spe- for a special occasion <laughs> <laughs> or something. Oh, I know. Would be nice. So if anybody has any ideas. I have a favorite teacher too. Oh. Yeah, I get it from Everlane. And mm-hmm. they only have certain colors. So I check. I yeah. should check again their website and see um, if they have more colors. Because they're pretty. It's like black, gray. And then every once in a while they have a couple of colors. But and do you have the V-neck? Yeah, the V-neck. Because I have to wear a V-neck. You do. With my body shape. Um, but I've often thought that too. Like, it'd be nice to have like something a little longer or a little. I know. Like flowier or whatever. Just like a <laughs> di- little bit different cut. Still the V-neck. I don't know yeah. what that would be. I <laughs> I'm not good with fashion, so just, <laughs> just give me something for me, to work with. For me, clothes is kind of, I mean, I I really like to show who I am through my clothes, and at the same time, who I am is very <laughs> simple. <laughs> like, I don't I don't want to think about it too much, because yeah. that's just who I am as a person. Yeah, I'm definitely showing who I am through my clothes. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just want it to be easier. Well, you wear cute headbands. You're wearing one right now. So that's how you can show some personality. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) I have noticed that I have been, I haven't even been trying this, but I have noticed that I've been collecting more earrings and necklaces lately. Oh, yeah. See? So I think I've been doing maybe more plain clothes and then adding accessories. Some bling (laughs) from Target. (laughs) Good for you. I have one pair of earrings. I, I oh, tend really? to wear one pair. Well, I have a few more, but I stick with one pair and I wear them for like mm-hmm. months. Yeah. So I do a different pair. I do that too often. I have a favorite yeah. that I just put on. It needs to be easy. I don't want to have to make mm-hmm. that decision in the morning. I agree. Yeah. You know what I need though? Okay. So now we're going into another topic. That's okay. Right. We're talking about jewelry now, but I need a place to organize my jewelry. Okay. Because it's now that I'm collecting some You need an pieces. earring tree or like yeah. a... I one must need an earring tree. Is that a thing? <laughs> I've never had one. I don't know. <laughs> Did you just make that up? <laughs> I've never had but one. it's a great idea. You should patent that if it, nobody Well, has. I'm picturing like a stand with holes mm-hmm. in it, and then you put your earrings in the holes. Is that what you're talking somebody about? Somebody on Instagram, somebody on Instagram posted about how they just got these really cool jars. Oh. And then they hooked their earrings around the edge of the, the jar. lid of the jar. The oh. co- yeah. Okay. So I may need to do something like this. And then something for necklaces, too. Because they're all in piles, and I have to untangle them right now. Oh, okay. See, <laughs> in my, my jewelry bags. My philosophy is I have, like, a little teeny. It's a drawer. It's a plastic from Target probably 15 years ago little set of drawers. <laughs> and if, I, if, it ever become, if it ever becomes too messy or tangled in there, I got to get rid of stuff. Yeah. So that's how I know it's time to get rid of stuff. You know, but I need I the even just the pieces I wear normally yeah. are just tangled messes right yeah. now. So yeah. I can't. They just have to be hung up. Yeah, I am uh, sure so if you scoured Pinterest, there are probably ideas aplenty. Well, here's me, <laughs> and as uh, maybe it's because I'm an Enneagram Seven or an ENFP. It's probably one of the two. I don't like to just buy the thing that's out there. Oh yeah, that everybody else has bought. Like, I'd rather, <laughs> I was thinking, I kind of want to, like, get a piece of wood and poke some nails in it yep. and then hang that up. Yeah. That's totally an Enneagram 7 thing. Yeah, it is. I know. <laughs> Who knows how this is going to ever happen, but <laughs> it's a good idea. It's a great idea. <laughs> okay. All right. So today we are talking about what we don't do. Mm-hmm. And I first became aware of this idea when I was reading Shauna Nyquist's book, Bittersweet. So I've talked before mm-hmm. and last week for sure on the podcast about how much I love Shauna Nyquist and her writing. And I read her book, Bittersweet. I don't know. Maybe it was like four years ago or something or five years ago. And it's just a collection of essays that she writes about. You know, she writes about like relationships and faith and community and food and stuff like that. And anyways... So one whole essay was about uh, what she doesn't do and having, uh, instead of having a to-do list, having like a to-don't list. Mm -hmm. And she was saying how this came about for her was she was talking to a friend who was a little bit further down the road from her. 
And her friend was telling her, and I'm quoting here, it's not hard to decide what you want your life to be about. What is hard, she said, is figuring out what you're willing to give up in order to do the things that you really care about. Mm -hmm. So that is something that I am always relearning Mm -hmm. (laughs) the older I get. And um, so anyways, in addition to creating like a to-do list, she um, decided to create lists of things she won't do in order to do the things that she was really passionate about or cared about. So good. You have to give up things in order to do the things that you love. So I started thinking about that. Like what it's okay to say no to things and it's okay to say, you know what? I don't do that. Or I outsource that or that's not important to me. And yeah. And so that is what we're going to talk about today. Yes. I remember too, um, listening to, I mean, I've listened to several podcasts about, uh, how, you know, life hacks for busy moms or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah. you should do this one trick and it's going to save you. And, and I love those. I think it's, I think it always comes out of a heart of, you know, wanting to make other people's lives better and easier and, and very helpful. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think yeah. they're trying to be helpful for me. Sometimes that just makes me feel bad or like, something's wrong with me because I don't like to do those things. I don't like to even do some of the, I don't know you don't, what it is exactly, but I sometimes just feel like I don't want to do that project that even to make my life easier, that may seemingly like uh, make your life easier, might not make my life easier. Yeah, Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. Well, because everybody's so different. Right, right. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're all so different. And Marn and I are going to talk about, you know, the things we don't do. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you may love to do some of those things that we don't do. And that's great and fine. But um, I guess we just want to encourage you to find a make a list of things that you don't do. So don't take our list and just do those things. (laughs) The point here is to encourage you to yeah, make your own list. Yeah. Or to just think about like, what things am I willing to give up? And yes. some of these things may be things that you enjoy. And that has been hard for me, too, sometimes. Because some some things I do enjoy, but just can't do them right now in this season. And so, um, yeah, it's just good to think about, like, <clears throat> what things are just not on my top priority list right now. Exactly. Yeah, and I have another favorite phrase, which I think I've said before here. If it's not a heck yes, it's a no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Except you didn't say heck. No. But I think we can't say that on the podcast. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, So I say that a lot because um, if I'm not super excited about something or super into something, then it's probably not the right time for me right now. Yeah. I think you are so good at this, Angela. You always have been since, I think, having kids, especially. Are you serious? Because, oh, yeah, you've always been so good about this. (laughs) Really? (laughs) I think it might be just part of your personality, too. And I think as a seven. I want to say yes to everything. And I mean, my husband is an Enneagram one and he has always been like the opposite. He's, he gets laser focused on one thing Mm -hmm. and, you know, so he is such a, I mean, it's just so good for me because I really have, I, it takes like self-discipline for me to not do all the things. Yeah. So it's good for me to have you as a good example, Sean. And I mean, just because I see how it benefits your life and it's so good. Yeah. So I'm doing those things too. Yeah. I mean, not that we're like patting each other on the back, but I have told you, I think for a seven, (laughs) you are, you are really good at this too. You are. Yeah. You, I think in some ways I am in some ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you do lots of fun things, but also, I don't know when it's not important, you just say no and you don't care. Like you, right, you just yeah. don't feel guilty about that. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I think socially, it's hard for me to say no to some, like even especially things I get passionate about and excited about. I want to say yes to everything. Yeah. If it has anything to do with like education or music, I just want to say yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. And yeah. I can't even say yes to all the good things right now. I just can't. Yeah. So w- what I'm really good at saying no to is like <laughs> um, mundane tasks. Yeah. <laughs> Very good at saying no to those. Yes, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, should we talk about our list? Let's start. Okay, so Maren, why don't you start and tell us the first thing that you don't do? Okay. 
I do not drive around to stores to get the perfect things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think what happened here was, especially when it, I started my adventures in healthy eating. Oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> is when I started to realize I could be driving around <laughs> all of the Twin Cities and picking out like the perfect things at every store. Like I could go to Whole Foods for this. I could go to Mississippi Market for this and Costco and Target and all these places. Yep. And I could be driving around all day. Yeah. And I'd have the perfect ingredients in my house and I would be miserable. And, and you'd have the cheapest <laughs> ingredients because sometimes it's about and that, like finding the cheapest thing yes. at the certain <laughs> store. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I just can't do it. Um, so what I've done is I've decided to pick Costco as my regular. Yeah. Because we have six people in our family, Costco is makes what we need. Yeah. It makes sense for us. Thankfully, Costco has become very good at supplying us with healthy things. Yeah. And the other thing I love about Costco is that they do not um they don't have aisles of like uh, like toys or they don't have these uh, at the ends of the aisles they don't have like junk yeah. that my kids want to get. Yeah. Whereas when we go to these other stores my kids just beg for all this crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because it's on the end of every aisle. So right. I love Costco because they they have all the stuff, almost everything that I need for a week. Yeah. Of food. And there's not, there's little temptation for me. Yeah. And the temptation that there is, like, you know, if I, if we want a bag of candy, it is like $15. And it's huge. And I'm not, and I'm not doing yeah. that. Yeah. So it's very easy for me to say, no, we're not getting that big bag of candy, <laughs> gummy worms or whatever. It's not <laughs> happening. So I love that. And I, it's been so helpful for me yeah. to just, just do Costco. And then um, we also remember um, back in one of our episodes, I decided to start using Amazon Prime now. Yeah. So anything during the week that comes up, that pops up, that is not that I don't have, I do not. I really try not to even run to the store to get it. Wow. Um, and I think I've saved money. I mean, I've definitely saved time. Yep. <laughs> and I, I'm sure we've saved money because every time you walk into Target, you spend 50 extra dollars yeah. on something you don't need, right? Right. Or whatever. It's yeah. just you always spend more. So I think I, I'm so I, – I feel so much more peaceful about our shopping. Good for you. And just, just simplifying our shopping. So the downside of that, though, is that sometimes you're not getting an ingredient that you could want. Yes. Or, and so – Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes, so this is what happens. My husband actually likes going to Mississippi Market okay, yep. <laughs> because he loves getting, I mean, he just loves that. So sometimes if he's in an area where there's a Mississippi Market, I'll yep. have him go there and just pick up a few things. Yep. Uh, some of our favorite items from, from there yep. um, or Whole Foods or whatever. And sometimes even on dates we go there <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know. It's it's very low key and less stress when there are no kids around and it's a Saturday night at seven p.m. Yeah, so yeah, so some we do that periodically, yeah. and so we get the things we want. We just kind of stock up on them. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, great. I love that one. I'm not as good um, as you at that, but I'm getting there. Yeah, but you have found ways to order a lot yeah. of healthy things yeah. online too. Yeah. Yeah. You the, uh, the online ordering has definitely helped with all of the mm -hmm. with the driving around. But I thought you were going to say when you said you don't drive around for stuff, I didn't know you were going to talk about groceries. I thought you were going to talk about like cl clothes or like finding a shirt oh, well, or finding a costume or finding a new journal or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> oh, I definitely. That is so true. You that is that, that goes in the same definitely goes in the same category. I do not drive around. I I mean when I drive around and try and find clothes for myself, I just get in a ball of fire. I get so – I just get – like I am not happy. I'm yeah. just not a happy person, yeah. so I just don't do it. Yeah. I, I, I'm happy to shop online for a little while mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with no crowds and uh, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I think, too, like some people love to shop and love to get out and, yeah. you know, oh, feel that energy know. of other people in the store and, sure, you know, sure. think that's like a fun activity. I guess you and I have just never been shoppers. Nope, we have not. <laughs> we definitely have not. <laughs> okay. How about you? What don't you do, Angela? Okay. The first thing I don't do is any record keeping. 
for oh, like homeschool. Uh, well, and then in general. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we're lucky to live in a state where we don't have to do any record keeping for homeschool. We have to take our yeah. state yearly test and that's it. So that is the one record that I keep. Yeah. But also I'm just not into, um, I would love to have memories preserved, I guess, but I'm not into doing the work. <laughs> you, it's true. That is not so into true. It. So I, it's just not <laughs> worth it for me to do it. So mm-hmm. I sometimes save papers. I guess now that I think about it, I really haven't saved any papers this year because I don't think we have any papers. But so like, well, if there's a special <laughs> something, I'll save it. But I'm not like creating a, a a three ring binder of like what we did for history this year and everybody's projects yeah. and all that. Okay. I'm not I doing think that. this is so good for people to hear. Okay. Because I think this is an, a very intimidating part of homeschool. Mm-hmm. That I think a lot of people just don't even homeschool because oh really they think they have to do all this work mm-hmm. like a teacher like like yeah. a like a public teacher public public school teacher yeah and that is not the case yeah I mean don't get me wrong I feel guilty about it sometimes because I'll be like if somebody asked me what did your this kid do in fifth grade math I'd be like mm-hmm. well I don't remember you know well <laughs> yeah that's okay um so I do feel guilty kind of some I sometimes feel guilty because mm-hmm. I think. Am I going to want that when they're older? Am I going to yeah. want to look back on some projects? I guess I, I might. Maybe. I mean, like I said, it would be nice, but I do not want to take the time to do that. And so no. I just don't. Um, and I have to tell you, um, like when I when I think back of back to when I was getting trained as a teacher in undergrad, yep. um, I remember they, I mean, it's so important. I mean, they were teaching us what the public school system was doing, which is you have got to record everything yep. and everything has to be um everything has to be like able to be tested like you have oh. to measure everything yeah you have to be able to measure what they've learned all the time mm-hmm. and i have to tell you that is not good for kids it's not good for them to like have all this record keeping of th- for them yeah it's so much pressure yeah it's too much for a child to have yeah. on themselves yeah so when you're learning, they need to be learning for the sake of learning. And if you are if you are focusing so much on keeping track of how well they're doing all the time, it like all goes out the window. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just enjoy it. Okay, thanks. I, I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also don't do any record keeping with like baby books. I really yeah. want to. I really would love my. Ba- I have my kids each have a baby book. Yeah. It's in a box. <laughs> yeah, it has moved with us three <laughs> times. <laughs> and my first child's got some stuff in there. But after yeah. that, I don't. And I have great intentions. And I should just I should just throw them away. But I, I had a baby book. My mom did a baby book for me. And I look at it a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know. I'm glad she did that. And so I do want that for my kids. And maybe that's the S in me coming mm-hmm. out. The sensor. Uh, yeah. I do want that. But I just... The thought well, of taking that out is just, I know, I should yeah. do it online. Well, the thing is, we have digital pictures. Yeah. And they didn't. And so you have kind of documented their whole life. In, <laughs> just, in photos on just, a computer? Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can someday make those into books. You have time, though. I could make those into books, but I've forgotten, like, all their Thing, cute things they did at three months or six months or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, I didn't ever take the time to write that stuff down. I feel kind of bad about that. But, and I'm I'm that mom who's like, was that, which kid was that who yeah, used to, that. whatever. Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> the other day, the other day, my youngest six-year-old, Josie, said, mom, what was my first word? And I was like, oh, gosh, I don't know. I mean, I didn't say that Make in my head. Up. I was thinking, I have no idea. Mama. I was thinking... Yeah, I said, probably mama. <laughs> okay, she was so satisfied. <laughs> okay, I do remember my kids' first words. Ugh. So I feel good about that. That's good job. the one thing Doing I remember. better than I am. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's your next thing, Marn? This is going to sound terrible. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm rethinking this whole show now. Um, we, I do not make breakfast or lunch for my kids. Okay. <laughs> That's a good now, one. I prov- I provide food <laughs> for my kids. Yes. <laughs> and I let them make their own food. Wow. Um so for breakfast I often for myself make um veggies. I saute veggies. Yep. 
often with meat or with eggs or whatever. And I've always offered that to my children. It's just not what they want Mm -hmm. in the mornings. So maybe someday they will take me up on my offer. Yep. Because, I mean, I guess technically I do make breakfast for everyone. You do. Just nobody eats it. Yeah. (laughs) Um, so I eat that myself, Sean and I eat that. And then my kids just make toast or, or have cereal or whatever. Um, so, and then for lunch, the same thing, my kids have their favorite thing that they all like to eat. If I told my kids we're all having the same thing for lunch every day, they would, I mean, it was just, it was becoming a struggle. So I just kept, so I just stopped and I was like, if you want to make something other than what I have planned, you can just make it. And so they've all just started making their own food. Wow. That is great. That <laughs> that builds such independence. You are giving them such a gift. Mm, thank you. You are because <laughs> it's a good they could make it. dinner too if they had to. I mean, they It's could, true. Yeah, yeah. So they can they're totally independent when it comes to food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hey. That's so great. I am not yeah. there yet. That's so great. Well, and then to go along with all this food stuff, I often don't, I ri- very rarely plan dinner either. Oh. Like, I do not make weekly plans. I used to do that. Yep. But that's just not in my, that's just not my favorite. And I, that was, that's one of those things where I'm sure I've read it on blogs and listened to it on podcasts. This is a great homemaker hack. <laughs> make a meal plan. Yeah. And I've tried so many times to make that work for me. And it's just not, yep. me. it's just not who I am. Yep. So I get all of my favorite ingredients every week. You know, I get all my staples. And then sometimes if I have an idea for a meal, I'll get those ingredients too. But for the most part, I just use what I have in my house. That is food. a skill. I feel like we, sh- we could do a whole show on that. Like, how do you do that? I want to ask <laughs> well, you all the details right now, but it's okay. Sure. It would be too long. But I just think that is a skill that most people don't have that skill. Well, here it goes back to being very simple. We have simple meals. Yeah. It usually entails meat yep. and veggies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some rice. I don't know. Yeah. If I'm feeling crazy. Oh, and then the other thing is I have I have outsourced making meals to sometimes we go through seasons where like right now we're getting hello fresh meals oh, so yeah. we get two we get two of those a week yeah and it is so nice yeah, yeah. it's so nice and my kids get super excited about making those too yeah so. yeah that's great i am not so there basically yet. i'm making no food <laughs> that is that is great i am really happy for you I feel like I need to let <laughs> go you. of control a little bit because at lunchtime, I feel like that's when I can like make them a plate with, mm-hmm. I call it a toddler plate, but like I could just put like a little veggie here and a veggie here and a fruit and a veggie and a, and then like <laughs> yeah, yeah. different kinds of leftovers that I'm trying to use up in little portions. Yes. And then I hand them the plate and I'm like, yes, I just got rid of all those leftovers and I forced them to eat all those veggies and they did it. See, that but is that so great too. Time. I am jealous of that. <laughs> And if I had the strength to <laughs> withstand the complaining of that, I would do that. I would. Because oh. that's a better option, I think. That's better. It's good. Well, good my job. kids are kind of evolving, and they're starting to make their own things. My son would make a sandwich three times a day if he could mm-hmm. with, like, a cheese slice that's, like, a half an inch thick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to buy a cheese slicer. It's so not a bad way to live. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, you had to buy a cheese slicer so it would I be did better. because he's like I don't know how to do this it's like the big block of Kerrygold you know I mean yeah. I understand it's good I know, I know. it's delicious it's really good <laughs> anyway my kids do try I mean they get excited if I say you can make your own lunch they get really excited but okay. I still I yeah. feel like I need that control of no they need veggies and, well here's the thing yeah. I actually I think it might have been Shauna Nequist too who said confession i don't make my kids eat veggies at every meal and i was like thank you i don't either and that's because i have veggies out all day Mm. like i just chop veggies and put them out on the table and they get eaten up wow so i that's where i feel like the pressure for dinner for me Mm. is like or meal time yep I, i can just not worry too much about it although i mean they probably should get I mean, we do eat veggies. Yeah. Let me just tell you, at meals, we do eat veggies. But just when I don't feel like forcing the veggies on them, I don't feel pressure to do that. Yeah. I just don't. Yep. Because they eat them all day. Yeah. So. Great. Okay. Well, how about you, Angela? What else do um, you do? 
I don't do any crafting or big homeschool projects or big projects, like fun Hallelujah. projects. No dioramas, so no, <laughs> no posters, <laughs> no homemade books. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad that about that. That is so great. Why do you feel uh, bad about that? Because, now this is where I can start to compare. But, mm-hmm. you know, everybody's doing cool stuff and putting it on the internet. And I'm seeing it and I'm thinking, oh, like some of it is really good quality and memorable and like a good learning experience. I just yeah. don't have the energy to do it. I like, I just, mm-hmm. it's not my favorite thing. And so I don't do it. And I feel, feel well, bad because I think my kids would like it. <laughs> So, yeah. Well, also, maybe there's something in you that knows that the real learning happens outside of those projects anyway. Well, yeah. I'm a questioner. Yes. So I always question, like, is all this time and energy I'm putting into this project really going to make a difference? Yeah. You right. know? Um, but I think there are some that would. I think there are some projects that would be good. There are. You know? But I just, I've kind of, like, I've kind of scrapped. I, I haven't made a decision that I'm not doing any projects, but... Mm-hmm. I kind of just operate in that mode. And if there was a cool project that came along that I was really interested in, I would do it. But I just, I don't, it's not me. And so I'm trying to just embrace who I am and, um, and be okay with that for homeschooling. Good for you. And I think the best thing for your kids is to just, uh, do what's best, do what is authentically you. Right. So if you're going to try and do projects all day and you hate projects, that's going to be a miserable homeschool for them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's better that you're doing what you love to do and they love to do it too. And Right. I mean, like I said, they would like some projects. When they heard about all the things you're doing for sure, traveling, sure. when we talked about our travel <laughs> episode, they were, they were genuinely jealous. Like, why aren't we doing those <laughs> fun things? And um, You know what, though? Here's... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I feel like those projects sounded <laughs> more amazing than they really were. You yeah. know, when they actually happen in real life, it gets messy and cut out and, yeah, you know. Yeah, but you're trying. I don't know. I feel like, yeah. I feel like you like projects more. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what you would rather uh. do than the same old boring <laughs> schedule. And I feel like, I need to do that same old boring schedule. I feel anxiety if we don't do the schedule. Like, mm-hmm. we're not getting to the regular things. And so then the projects and fun stuff get sometimes cut out. And so, whatever. <laughs> I'm just trying to embrace it. Yeah. Embrace it. Embrace it. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I should move down to... I'll, I'm going to skip to one of mine that relates to that. Sure. Though. Go ahead. Um, I don't do a lot of schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm talking about we do a lot of projects. Yeah. We do a lot of projects. Yeah. You know, we uh, do a lot of, I would say, you know, science projects. You know, we group caterpillars and those kind of things. Yeah. I know. Really um, fun stuff. We build stuff. We create stuff. Uh, we do not sit at a table and do a lot of, like, traditional schoolwork. Yeah. <laughs> and I... <laughs> I I really I am in angst about that. I feel terrible about it so often, but I also can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably just how you feel about the school projects, the projects, yeah, yeah. where you're like, yeah. I should be doing this. It's the right thing to do, and I just can't. Yeah. So I mean, we do. Let me tell you, I am not denying my kids' education. I am not. We do work, but it. Uh, it's just not um, like it wouldn't it would not be an exemplary uh, model. I think it could be. <laughs> I just think it's not probably what people think about first. You know, it's not school at home. You're not doing school at home. Exactly. Yeah, that is so true. And when people ask me, oh, are you, are you ready for the end of school to be done? You know, homeschool. Yeah. I am just like, if you knew how little <laughs> we already do. I, I'm not looking forward to the end of school because it's not going to be that different for us. Yeah. Because we're not doing a whole lot right now. We are doing some. We're doing some work. Yeah. It's not a ton. Of, it, not a ton of traditional work. It doesn't look like sitting at a table and doing a workbook mm-hmm. or. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of, and a lot of that has to do with me as for my personality. And a lot of it does have to do with my kids. Yeah. And I just know, I know them. 
I know what already, I just know it's what they need. Yeah. So good for you. I think knowing yourself and your kids is yeah, like the, be- you know, half the battle. So right. That's good. It's so true. So true. Okay. My next one is yes. I don't do any gardening <laughs> or growing anything, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, this is another one I can feel guilty about. So I love good quality food. I love mm-hmm. knowing where my food comes from. I love the idea of teaching my kids how to garden. Yes. I want, I love being outside. I yeah. like doing, you know, things outside. So I thought that having a garden would be a great fit for me and the kids. Right. And I tried it and it it, it was a major flop. <laughs> <laughs> maybe when maybe when my husband Aww. comes on the show later, we mm-hmm. can talk about this because he was, yeah. he was so frustrated with me. <laughs> Cuz I made him like build a fence cuz we have deer, you know. So I made him yes. build a fence that was high enough and <laughs> like, we had my brother-in-law come over and like help us start it and it was a big project and um then I was like oh wait I don't like this <laughs> <laughs> so what what specifically was I it that know. you did not like about it I think it's like for me like knowing that I have to do it like that it's yeah. like it's out there calling to me like I need to go weed or plant or pick whatever it is like I better yeah. get out there my garden's calling There's- there's always something. I don't, I do not like that feeling. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I didn't have success growing anything for like two years. Nothing grew. So I think that like contributed. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing grew. Um, or like knowing like, should I be watering more? Should I not water at all? Like what? I, yeah. I don't know. It's like, I know it's an art and I know it's hard work and I'm just, not, it's not where I want to spend. It's a lot of work and it's not where I want to work hard. So I decided. Yes. I would rather pay somebody who knows what they're doing, who's really good at it, to, like, grow me my veggies. And I feel guilty <laughs> about that for my kids because they're not. Yeah. See- it would be such a great homeschool project. I'm sure lots of you out there <laughs> I mean, do this for your yeah. homeschool. Good for you. It is such a great project, and I wish I could do it, but it's not me. It, like, if somebody was, if somebody did that well, that could be their homeschool. could be the whole thing. That could be it. Yeah. <laughs> you're done yeah just grow a garden yeah. I know but also my mom's a really good gardener and mm-hmm. so like I feel good like when we go to visit there you know the kids could have a taste of it have a little taste <laughs> yep definitely <laughs> it'd be something special yeah that they see there so I feel okay about it yep and I'm... it's good to it's good to show that you're supporting other farmers yep right I yep. mean because you because you're part of a CSA yeah right? yep and we go visit the farm And yeah, so they see it all. I just, I think like my personality is I want to be the best parent. (laughs) And in my mind, like having your own garden is one, one thing that the the best parent would do. (laughs) (laughs) And I don't do that. And I just have to be okay with that. We're not doing that. Yep. So yes. And, and that like translates to like houseplants. I just can't keep a houseplant alive and I'm tempted. I are, I've gotten rid of all of our houseplants. And I've, like, attributed to the fact that we have no light coming in. Or, like, we don't have good light. There's, like, no good place to set it or whatever. Like, that must be the problem. And we're moving. And so, like, I'm tempted to be like, ooh, I could get a couple plants. But I probably should talk myself out of that because it's not going to go well. (laughs) I remember when our kids were very little, like, toddler age. Yeah. And we couldn't have plants in the house at all. Or otherwise, they would just get pulled over all day. So we got rid of all our plants. And my husband was like, don't you miss plants? I mean, is it so, it's like, I just really miss having those around. And I was like, no, this is like a vacation for me. I don't have to water them. try and keep these plants alive. Cause I am the worst. I'm the worst. You don't have to sweep around them. Yeah. You don't have to wipe, whatever, whatever you do with plants. I know. I love, I do love plants. I just, I, that's a responsibility I can't yeah. be held accountable for right now. Right. <laughs> much it's too it is too much four children oh gosh keep alive right now okay what's your next one lauren all right i do not gosh this is sounding worse and worse it's okay i do not bathe my children oh wow mm-hmm. that is bad and i know <laughs> so let me define that i 
my children do get clean. It's just <laughs> when they I make them do it themselves. Now, when they were younger and I had to bathe them, their baths were few and far between. <laughs> So, because I just, it's not my favorite thing to do. I don't like washing kids' hair. Oh, yeah. It's not my favorite. Yep. There's so much whining and complaining and, ah. Yeah. So I just don't <laughs> like it. I actually, my kids ha- did take, like, just fun baths just to play oh, yeah. in, the, in the water. But, like, to actually get clean, that very rarely happened. What's now the that difference? they're old and A fun bath. Oh, don't they get the clean in the fun bath? They don't get their hair washed. Oh, well. They get no soap whatsoever. Okay. Just water. It's fine. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. See, okay. this is why we do this podcast. Let's make each other feel so much better. I stopped using soap on my kids, like, very much. Unless they're really yeah. dirty. So, it's fine. Yeah. Oh. Thanks. I feel so much better. <laughs> yeah, okay. But right now, now my kids can, like, you know, turn on the faucet, get at the right temperature, you plug the holes, get in there, wash their own hair. They, they do it all. Wow. All of it. Yeah. So... Now it's like, I think it's time for a bath. Everybody, I think it's, I think everybody's getting a bath tonight or a shower or whatever because they can all take care of themselves and do it. And it's like a good, it's a good task for them to work on right now to get good at that. Um, and so now they're doing, they're doing that on their own. Yeah. I'm, so I'm still not bathing my children. Yeah. Good it's for great. you. Sure. It's so great. Some I people know. really love that though. It's like a, you know, some people are into that. I think Jeremy's it one is of those. True. He was into that, especially when was they were he? younger. Yeah. Oh, Sean and I would just try and pawn it off on each other. <laughs> <laughs> can you can you do this? Uh, I guess so. You know. Just... <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Okay. How? Okay. How about you? What don't you do? Uh, you? Well, I've talked about this before, but this is a big one. I do not do any kids' laundry, and I don't. Then, like, I don't have laundry problems. Lots of people complain Ugh. about their mounds of laundry, and I just I don't have laundry problems because I just don't, don't do I don't do their laundry. So, um, so they that just, is amazing. They just do it. They if they don't have any clothes, they gotta do their laundry. You know, and I mean they just do it yeah. on their own, and I don't care mm-hmm. if they stuffed. They will stuff the thing as full as possible. Like, yeah. or I think there can't be much water getting in there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it, it gets down. I mean, it shrinks yeah, down the when yeah. the water gets in. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like the size of what I would it's put, like two loads, you know, yeah. in one. <laughs> yeah, and I don't care. I just don't care. And my son's the opposite. Wow. He washes. He put it on his list to wash every other day. So he washes like four things at once. But I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah, that works for him. Yes. He's finding a system that works great. Mm-hmm. And so I love. I just I love that. I don't do it. I won't do it. That is. That is so exciting to me. I'm compelled. My oldest does her own laundry now. Yep. Since we talked about this the last time. Yep. I was telling her about it and she was like, ooh, I want to do that. So she started. Yep. And now I'm. You're working on the other one. I'm sold. Okay. Well, and she's down there in the basement with the laundry anyway. Yeah, I know. Easy. Oh, yeah. So easy. Totally. Yeah. Yep. That is so, I am just so inspired by that. Well, I think Good kids, job. like, well, I just remember my own experience. And I didn't mm-hmm. do laundry. I did not do laundry until I was for sure a teenager. Because, mm-hmm. like, my mom wasn't washing my jeans fast enough, you know? Yeah. yeah and right. so finally one day I was just like, can I do it on my own? And she's like, yeah. And then I just felt that, <laughs> felt such wow. independence. Yeah, yeah. Like, I could have my clothes whenever I wanted them clean. And yep. And I loved it. So I don't know. <laughs> yes. So I feel It like, is a feeling of independence. Yeah. It definitely is. Yeah. And all these things are bathing yourself. Yeah. Right. <laughs> good. All it right. So good. What so good. is your next one, Maren? All right. So <laughs> one thing I do, this is another hack that kind of bothers me sometimes, is that I think a lot of, well, a lot of homemakers, especially expert homemakers, are really into making sure your kitchen is like super clean before you go to bed. My kitchen is not, I do not make sure my kitchen is clean before I go to bed. Okay. And this might be because I'm a, a P yeah. on the Enneagram yeah. and, or on the Myers-Briggs. So like um, getting things taken care of ahead of time is not always a, super important to me. Yeah. Um, And so I just have had to let that go because I've always thought that is my standard for like, 
being a mother. Yep. Having a clean a good, kitchen. A, a, yes, having a clean kitchen. So, and I don't do that, and I'll just clarify, because um, I <laughs> I don't really um, wash dishes very much. <laughs> I don't like to wash dishes. <laughs> and so How is I your will, house staying running? Wow, your kids are doing I, it all. <laughs> no, no, no. My kids aren't washing dishes very much either. We just fill the dishwasher up. And yeah. when the dishwasher is full, we turn it on. And then it takes two hours. <laughs> yeah. So if our dishwasher is full at after dinner mm-hmm. and we've turned it on and it's starting, there we sometimes will have more dishes yeah. that are just going to be sitting there. Yeah. And I've decided, I think like, I think I'm sure my mom would not let that happen. My mom would never let that happen. She would just wash those dishes. Yeah. And like get them out of the way. Yeah. Like because that's not a clean kitchen. So for me, I it's my priority to rest and relax after dinner. Yeah. Or go exercise or like do something that I need. So I am not going to wash more dishes after dinner. Yeah. After we've cleaned up after dinner. So if the dishwasher is full and it's running. I am leaving those dishes. Good for you. Until the next day. I'm impressed. So then when you wake up in the morning, do you feel anxiety watching walking into your kitchen and seeing a mess? Um I I mean I'd prefer to have a nice clean kitchen, but I also think that helped me have a relaxing um, yeah. evening. Yeah. So I'm fine with it. And it doesn't take long because our chores, our morning chores include cleaning out the dishwasher. So yeah. I have two kids who clean out the dishwasher. Yeah. And right away in the morning. And so I just then I can just quickly put those yeah. in. It's very it goes very quickly. Wow. So that's great. I cannot do that. Cannot do that. Because I, I feel well, anxiety. I, I feel such anxiety with a messy kitchen. And I feel like it takes me forever. Cause then when you have dishes build up, then more build up and more build up. Like I don't know, yeah. somebody'll get a snack and then that's out and then whatever. And then the counter's messy and I just if I don't get to it, then I just feel anxiety yeah. all day. Well, I have anxiety when we have a clean, a, a messy kitchen, like, I mean, after a meal. Yeah. And it hasn't been cleaned up yet. And then my kids are like, can I make cookies? <laughs> or can I make a smoothie? And I'm like, no, then absolutely nothing happens in this kitchen until it is clean. Yeah. And that might be clean until the dishwasher is full. And then we st- we might still have a pile of dishes mm-hmm. still. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. And that's fine. I'm just fine with the pile. Yeah, good for you. That everything is cleaned up except this pile. But here's what happened: like when I, when my kids were toddlers, and or you know when we had, or when we had baby, like newborn twins, <laughs> our kitchen was a mess. Yeah. And I remember thinking, I am so exhausted right now. I can hardly stand up. Mm-hmm. And in my mind, I needed a clean. You know, like. Because the standard in my head was to have a clean kitchen. I'm like in the kitchen doing these dishes and I'm thinking, what am I doing? Yeah. I need sleep. I need sleep more than this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when we just decided it's okay to have a messy kitchen sometimes. That is so great. You know, that's what kind of growing, I don't know. I think it takes a while to grow up and realize you don't have to do things the way either yeah, your mom right. did or everybody else <laughs> right, is doing right. it or right, right. like society tells you. And so if you find a way that works, I think that's great. Yeah. Anyway. Good for you. Okay. Thanks. Okay. What What else don't you do? Okay. So I just made this decision. It took me a long time to figure this out, but we are not doing date nights out anymore. Oh my goodness. This is another thing that everyone tells you. Like for a good marriage, yes. you need to have you date nights. You need to do this. Mm-hmm. And because I'm an introvert, I just struggled because you'd get the babysitter and then you'd, yeah. and then you'd go out to dinner and then you'd want to come home, but you still have a babysitter. And you're yeah. like, oh, I guess we could, I don't know. You're just trying to find things. We could go get some <laughs> stuff at the grocery store. or we could... <laughs> I don't know. I would always prefer to be at home. But what's hard is your kids are at home. And so you kind yeah. of need a break with your spouse away from your kids. So it's really hard. But I just made the decision. Like, it's been slowly. It's been a long time coming. So it's been, we've been slowly kind of converting to this. But yeah. I would rather just shut our bedroom door and <laughs> get takeout. Wow. <laughs> I know. Oh, okay. You always okay. laugh at this, that we just shut <laughs> our do. bedroom door. Nobody can come in. <laughs> and, like, and then get takeout and, like, watch Not a show. Or having special alone time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's okay. what we do. Mm-hmm. 
And we, um, so we started doing this when our 12 year old was like a little bit younger and she would, you know, kind of watch the kids out there. Yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. they would have dinner, they would put in a movie or whatever, and then we would have a long time. But now I feel like it's just much easier for us to do that. So we're going to start, we're going to do that more now. Have a date night in. No, That's I, so great. I don't have time to like figure out what restaurant we're going yeah. to and like make yeah. a reservation or you get there and it's busy and you have to wait. I don't know. I think because yeah. I'm an introvert, that is just not my thing. I'd rather be yeah. home. It is a lot of extroverting. It's a lot of extroverting. Even just getting the babysitter is it's a lot of work. A lot of ex- It is. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And it's expensive. And then look at that. Mm-hmm. You don't have to pay for a babysitter. So yep. you just stay home. Good for you. Good for yeah. you that you figured out what works for you. And Jeremy likes that too. He does. All right. I think it's time to wrap up. All right. Yeah. Those were really good. Yeah. It was fun to talk about. It was very fun to talk about. So if you if you have something that you don't do and you want to share with the group, you should go to Facebook and join our closed group. Yes. Unrefined homeschoolers. Yep. And we can talk about what we don't do. Yeah. I would love <laughs> to hear your ideas. So the point is, I, you know, again, not to not do what we don't do. Exactly. (laughs) But to make your own list and make sure you have things because you can only do so much and you want to save your energy for the things you are enjoying. Absolutely. Yeah. And everybody will be better for it. Your whole family. Yep. For sure. So, all right. Should we move on to loving this week? Yes. Let's do that. LTW. All right, Angela, what are you loving? Okay. So I have a book by my favorite author. Yes. Okay. So Anne Lamott, I have talked about her before. (laughs) Yes. Uh, she writes nonfiction kind of essays, sort of like sort of like Shannon Equist, but they're about like faith and people and just culture and stuff like that. And so yeah. she is a beautiful writer. If you've never read anything by her, it would be very easy to pick up. And mm. the, like I said, they're little essays, so you can just read one or whatever. They're just really good. So she has a new book out called Hallelujah Anyway. Yes, I saw that. Did you? Okay, it is oh. so good. I am loving it. I read it before bed. Good. And uh, just about like, I don't know, like I said, they're they're all about different things, but um, just about her own experiences, her, her own, own experiences, stories? like she will tell stories about herself or about people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's really hard to describe her writing. So I'm not going to try because I'm not good with that. But just trust me, it's really good. Okay. And I'm excited because Sounds good. she has lots of, she probably has, I'm just going to guess, 15 books that have come out. She does one every couple of years. And so I get excited when there's a new one. If you've never that's read so her, awesome. you could start with this one or you could start with Traveling Mercies. That's my other, that's my favorite. Yes. Of hers. Yeah. I think I read part of that one because you had me read it. I did. <laughs> when we were on tr- a trip once. Yeah. Like, just read this chapter. Yeah. And it was so good. Yeah. I should have just gone. I should have read the whole thing. Yeah. Awesome. So how about you? What are you loving this week? Okay. I'm loving a few new Instagram follows. All right. We love those. I always, I, I go and follow your follows right away. Good. Yeah. These are some great ones. Okay. Um. So, and <laughs> they're very different from each other. Okay. So first of all, I'm loving following the National Geographic Instagrams. Oh. Instagrams. So they have a couple. They have just, it's called Nat Geo. Yeah. N-A-T-G-E-O. Yep. And then they also have Nat Geo Travel, oh. which I am loving. So they're both, you know, uh, videos and pictures from around the world Okay. of great nature things, but also the uh, Nat Geo Travel. Mm-hmm. I just realized this week I was loving it. They had these inter- Instagram stories of this guy uh, just riding on the longest... <laughs> Longest train ride, I think the longest train like in the world. And I think it was like through India or something. And it was just so fascinating. He just went and talked to people on the train, on this huge train. I mean, it was just, I don't know. It was just fascinating listening to people from across the world. Yeah. Like that just, they were just on this train today. And I just, I I love it. I can't go to India today, but that was just so cool. Yeah. Just so amazing. That sounds cool. Just to hear from people. Yeah, it was so cool. And then um, there are, I mean, they showed a video of travelers in, I mean, 
I want to say <laughs> <laughs> the Antarctic. I mean, just like everywhere, yeah. places you would not even think of. I mean, and they're just so diverse. Yeah. Just the diverse yeah. pictures. It's just amazing. Right. Gets me very excited. It kind of um, scratches my travel itch when I can't travel. Yeah. So, and yeah. then. Okay. To be completely opposite of that, <laughs> I am following, I told you about this this week, uh, this, an actress, her name is Retta, and she was on Parks and Rec, yep. and uh, she was not one of the biggest stars, but I just started following some of the people from Parks and Rec. Anyway, she has started doing Instagram stories, and they're just hilarious. <laughs> they're just, it's just complete entertainment, and it's really just her everyday just very mundane yeah. stuff, but she makes it so funny. Yeah. She's just a funny person. Yeah. And I just love her. Yeah. You told me about her and I followed <laughs> yeah. her and then I watched her make coffee and I was like, yeah. that is good. I don't know why it's she good. Made- it's like <laughs> in a dark room. You could barely see it. <laughs> but she sings along and she's commenting on it and she just has a personality that is so entertaining. I just love it. You know, I don't know what it is about Instagram stories, but I'm really getting into it and I'm watching mm. them. I'm really getting into watching people who are good at doing it. Me too. Yeah. Maybe we should do that more. I know. I'm trying. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's an art. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. So if you would like to follow us on Instagram, you can do that. We are at Homeschool Unrefined at, on Instagram for our uh, podcast account and then we also have personal accounts you could follow and we are at unrefined angela and unrefined marn yep so you could follow us there if you wanted um we're also on facebook at homeschool unrefined you could follow us there and you could also join our facebook group that we talked about Mm -hmm. you just go into facebook and you type in unrefined homeschoolers and then you can click and we will add you and we also have yeah. a website, Homeschool Unrefined. You could find us there, and you can find all of our yes. show notes there, or our show notes for this episode and all episodes will be in your podcast app, too. And I was just going to say, if you have a friend who homeschools or who just you think would enjoy our podcast because they're parents or whatever, um, you could always just share our website because all of our podcasts are on there. Yep. If they're not podcast users, it's really hard sometimes. I mean, there are so many non-podcast listeners yeah <laughs> non-podcast users so if you just want to give them our website that's great but otherwise teach them how to use yeah podcast sometimes catcher. i just ask somebody to see their phone and i just show them where it is and then uh, a lot of times people they don't don't even know how to do it so if you can just show them that would be great yeah it's so helpful yeah so thanks All everybody right. for listening and we will see you next week thanks for listening you can connect with us and find show notes at homeschoolunrefined.com Also, thanks to Gambler's Daughter for providing the music for our show. You can find out more at gamblersdaughter.com.